Alright, real quick, before we start this video off, I ran a poll on Twitter about what type of video you guys wanted me to make, and that didn't really help much. So I just decided myself. If you want to participate in these types of things and get the latest updates on my videos, make sure to follow my Twitter account at TheRealHanky. Anyways, sorry for holding things up, let's just jump right into the theory. Dr. Regman, Such an iconic villain. But we have to wonder, how did he end up like this? On the surface, he may just seem greedy. He does want world domination after all. But boy do I have a story for you. This is going to be a double theory on how Eggman became who he is today and why the Wisps from Sonic Colors could actually have been former humans. Make sure to stick around for the whole video because it gets a lot more interesting as we get deeper into it. So let's get going. To start this theory off, let's go back into the past. Way into the past, to events that happened before Sonic himself even existed. That's right, we're talking about good old Sonic Adventure 2. We're here to look at Eggman's relatives. So we already know he has a grandfather named Gerald Robotnik, but there's a connection that a lot of people might forget to make. Gerald Robotnik had a granddaughter named Maria. Therefore, Eggman and Maria were brother and sister because they shared Gerald Robotnik as a grandfather. That is, until something tragic happened to Maria. If you're already aware of this, go ahead and skip to the time on the screen because I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know. If you're still here, Gerald Robotnik created Shadow in an attempt to save his granddaughter Maria. Shadow befriended Maria, however when these guys called the G.U.N. invaded Robotnik's lair and killed Maria, Robotnik and Shadow quickly let their desires for vengeance take over. Robotnik basically went insane, and Shadow was put into a state of suspended animation. These events killed everyone known to be related to Eggman in one go, so you can imagine the toll this took on him. What's important to notice is that Maria told Shadow that she wanted him to give the world a chance. These words were what kept Shadow from just completely annihilating the entire world. Her words moved him to do what was right, but here's the kicker. She never had the opportunity to say this to Eggman, so he was blinded by rage just like Shadow would have been. In Shadow the Hedgehog 2005, it's made clear that Shadow considers humans to be pathetic and worthless. He hates humans. But let's stop for a second. All these years, Eggman has been capturing animals. He thinks they're worthless by themselves, and has the same type of hatred for them, especially since one of them keeps foiling his plots. And what has he always opposed Sonic with? Machines, technology, robots. Making these types of mechanisms is clearly his passion. So Eggman's method of turning animals into robots accomplishes so much for his objectives. He's progressing with technology, capturing animals, and forcing them to fight Sonic, all in one process. However, a growing problem for Eggman over the years is that he doesn't have friends. All of his family is dead, and there is no one on the entire Earth that cares for him. And Sonic has made fun of him for this, which rubs salt in the wound. <laughs> Boss? <gasps> It can't be! It's impossible to get out of the Phantom Ruby's dumb space! <laughs> well, maybe by myself, but I had a little help from my friend. Something you wouldn't understand, since you don't have any friends. <laughs> this changes nothing. <laughs> Dr. Eggman will still have the last laugh. <laughs> maybe he'd have more friends if he didn't talk about himself in the third person. Of course, that's kind of what happens when you try to destroy the world too many times, but this lack of people that are there for him is what's driving his insanity to new levels with each title. He even resorted to making a couple of robots just to have people to talk to. It's really depressing to be honest. But here's where we get into the good stuff. Sonic Unleashed is the last time we've seen the Chaos Emeralds have a role in the main plot of a game. In other titles it's been like DLC or an extra add-on, but it hasn't actually been a real effect, so I don't really count those. Every title since and including Sonic Colors doesn't involve any humans besides Eggman. There must have been something that happened between the events of Unleashed and Colors that took out the entirety of the human race and transformed them into Wisps, besides Eggman of course. And what happened between Unleashed and Colors? Black Knight. In Black Knight, Sonic is suddenly and unexpectedly warped out of his world and into a mythical one. But the important thing about this game is that we never see Sonic return to his original world. Actually, he seems content with just staying where he is. He feels like it's his duty to fight for his people. The problem here is, what about Sonic's original world? 
Eggman doesn't make an appearance in Black Knight, so Sonic isn't there to stop him from wreaking havoc in his original world. He just left, he just dipped, he's gone. So Eggman is the last human alive, and has been since Colors. So he's very frustrated that he can't just rule the entire world. Why are these animals stopping him? The problem is the world needs animals and plants in the ecosystem to sustain itself. Eggman might not see the consequences of destroying the entire world and redesigning it into an empire powered only by technology because he wouldn't live to see his virgin rebuilt anyways. Or maybe he does and actually wants to bring about the apocalypse. Either way, the world needs so many materials that just can't be produced by technology. Crops need water, rich soil, and sunlight to grow. If crops can't grow, animals can't eat them, so they would die off as well. And if Eggman didn't have crops or animals to eat, he would die too. Basically, the whole world would get screwed if one of Eggman's plans is successful. So Team Sonic isn't fighting to save the world from Eggman's power. They're fighting to save the world from complete and utter annihilation. Another thing to notice is that the Chaos Emeralds haven't made an appearance in the plot of a Sonic title since and including Sonic and the Black Knight. Although they've made appearances, they aren't used in the final boss or anything like they would have been in the past. They haven't held an importance to the plot of the game, or so we think. According to the Sonic Wiki, anyone who combines all seven Chaos Emeralds can control ultimate power. It then goes on to say that throughout history, the Chaos Emeralds have been the center of countless world-threatening conflicts and have been targeted by multiple factions on both Earth and beyond who seek them for their near-limitless powers. Ultimate power, world-threatening conflicts on Earth and beyond? All of this ties into the plots of Unleashed in Colors. So, we're focusing on the events between Unleashed and Colors, right? Let's start with the final boss in Unleashed, or mainly what happens after it. So look closely, the Chaos Emeralds leave Sonic. Then, this Gaia Colossus thing flung Sonic far away. But the Chaos Emeralds are still down there, all seven of them, just waiting for Eggman to uncover them again and use their powers to make a huge change, such as turning all the other humans into an energy source. He seems to like efficiency. This might sound a bit unrealistic, but let me explain. One of the main things that's been said about the Chaos Emeralds throughout the Sonic series is that they can transform thoughts into reality. So with the power of the seven Chaos Emeralds, nothing is unrealistic. Eggman wants to get rid of humans, and he wants an energy source to power his machines. This would also explain why there are seven main zones or areas in Sonic Colors. Tropical Resort, Sweet Mountain, Starlight Carnival, Planet Wisp, Aquarium Park, Asteroid Coaster, and Terminal Velocity. There's room for each of them to be powered by one Chaos Emerald. But look at this cutscene. What is this place? Whoa. This is where he converts them into the strange, negative aliens with the freaky energy. Chaos Emeralds have both positive and negative energy. What's going on here is that the positive energy is being extracted from the Wisps to make sure they only have negative energy. Hence why they're called Nego Wisps. If they only have negative energy, they can be used for purely evil purposes. And how would the Wisps perfectly understand English without the need of the translator if they weren't human before? It wouldn't make sense. Also, what's Eggman planning to use Wisps for again? A mind control weapon. How would these Wisps be able to control minds if they didn't have some form of DNA or resemblance to life on Earth? The Wisps just share way too many similarities with life on Earth for all of this to be a coincidence. Anyways, feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed or got something out of this, and make sure to subscribe to avoid missing out. Be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram if you want the latest updates on my videos and personal life as well. And if you really want to help out, sharing the video helps so so much. And that's really the best way you can support this video and my channel as a whole. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. See ya! by myself, but I had a little help from my friend. Something you wouldn't understand since you don't have any friends. Mm, this changes nothing. Stop!
Dr. Eggman will still have the last laugh.